morning Carl Schuf here from snorkel.tv and today we're going to be talking about something really cool we're going to talk about tweening a variable now you may be asking what the heck does tweening a variable mean you may be used to tweening visible objects on the stage changing their position or their alpha or their scale um, we're used to that but how do you tween a variable well, tweening a variable means that over time, the value of a variable will change, and we're going to use tween max to do that. And then we're also going to show you how we can display that value changing with a dynamic text field. Notice how every time I press this button, the number changes by 10, and it counts up. Now, traditionally, you could do this by using set interval or a timer. Um, and say, okay, every time the timer ticks, add one to a number, update a text field, check to see if that number has reached the maximum. If so, then end the timer or else keep going. And uh, it's a lot of work. But with tween max or tween light, this is really, really simple. So we're going to show you how to change a variable's value over time. And what's even cooler is that we can also add easing so that the number can change really fast at the beginning or really fast at the end. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so there's my finished file. In my start file here, I just want to show you how the file is built. On the stage, we have something here called Score MC, and it is a movie clip. And inside of Score MC, if I double click on it, we have a dynamic text field called score underscore txt. It's a dynamic text field, meaning that the value of that text can change. As such, we have embedded the numerals for this font that I'm using. And if you're wondering how I have all these extreme awesome bevel effects going on here, well, we're just using some filters. So let me just uh, close some windows here. We have a drop shadow, a glow, and a bevel for this outrageous three-dimensional multicolored text effect. All right, go back to scene one, and we have a button here called add 10 underscore MC, and we have a background, which is just a little rectangle filled with a gradient. All right, let's get to the actions, and let's go crack this sucker open. I already have some code in here that enables the hand cursor on the button. I've added an event listener for that button for when I need it. Um, so I don't have to type all that stuff out in front of you, because that's all basics. All right, now let's show you how to tween a variable. First thing I'm going to do is set up the variable that I want to tween. I'm going to say score is a number, and we're going to start it at 0. The next thing I'm going to do is use tween max or tween light. All right, and I'm going to say tween max 2. And whenever we're doing a programmatic tween with tween max, we need to provide the name of the movie clip that we're tweening, how long our tween is going to take, and what property of that movie clip we are going to change. Um, we're going to be dealing with this score variable on the main timeline, so I'm just going to put in the word this, which refers to this timeline where this code exists, and we'll say it's going to take one second, and we're going to provide the property to change, and let me just show you real quick, let's just say the X is going to go to 200. I'll show you exactly what this means. Again, this refers to the main timeline where my code lives. So, test the movie out. You'll notice that, bring you over here. Let's test again. Flash, you're killing me. Let's test one more time. There we go. You'll notice that everything on my stage moves over because this refers to the main timeline. Okay, that's not really what I want to do though. Um, just wanted to show you that this refers to the main timeline and X is a property of the main timeline. Well, score is also technically a property of the main timeline. It's a variable living on the main timeline. So what I'm going to do is instead of tweening the X property of the main timeline, I'm going to be tweening the score property of the main timeline. Now, when I do this and run the movie, there's nothing visual to see. Well, I want to prove that the score value really did tween from 0 to 200. And the way I can do this is I can first verify in the beginning of the movie that score is going to be zero. And then when this tween is done, I'm going to add an on complete callback function here 
that I'm going to call show score. All right, and this is all just to demonstrate um, that score has changed. So I'm just going to say function show score, chuck a little void in there, and we're going to say trace score. So what should happen is the first, as soon as this movie loads, score is going to trace out as being zero. The tween will run when it's complete show score will run and hopefully we'll see 200 there. So let's test this out. There we go. Pay attention down here. Um, first thing happened, a zero came up and then a 200. Let's make this tween take two seconds. All right. The movie starts, we have zero and then automatically 200 shows up. So score definitely is changing. Well, I wanna see it change through all those little uh, increments in between 0 and 200. So instead of using on complete, tween max allows us to run a function on update, which means every time that value changes because of tween max monkeying with it, um, now show score will run. So let's watch this. Um, in fact, let me just, uh, let's do it, test it out. And here you go. These are all the values that are being generated over two seconds. Now there are some pretty hairy decimals on there that we're gonna wanna shave off, but we start at zero and then it incrementally increases all the way to 200. Now instead of just tracing this out, let's tell that text field, which lives inside of score MC that has the name of score text to set its text property equal to the value of score. So we don't really need to trace anymore because now my text field works. There we go. It went to 200. Do it again. Now what you're seeing is all those hairy decimals. Um, we want to get rid of those. And we also want to slow this down a bit. So let's not tween all the way to 200. Let's just tween to 10 and let's take two seconds. That's fine. So there you go we end at 10. But again, all those decimals, not so nice. So let's do this. Let's convert integer to, I'm sorry, let's convert score to an integer. All right, so that's gonna shave off all the decimals and we'll have nice whole numbers. Test this out. And there you go. One more time. Now, as that value changes between zero and 10, we're getting an update in our display. And it's nice and neat. Um, two seconds might be a little bit long for this, so let's go to one. And you'll also see that the last few numbers flip around pretty slow because built into tween max is a little bit of an ease out, okay? And what I wanna do is overwrite that a little bit. Um, I want all the numbers to change um, at a constant rate. So I'm just going to add on to here ease. Let's just do strong ease out just so it's absolutely um, noticeable what's happening here. Numbers start fast and then there's that huge gap between 9 and 10. So it's going very slow at the end. I'm going to switch this around to be linear, which means a constant rate of motion and it's going to be ease none. So now there's a constant pace happening. And I could speed that up by making this ease take less time. And there you have it. Um, the example I showed you in the beginning um, just takes that concept and makes it a little bit more fancy by adding the action to a button press. Whoa, it looks like I got rid of my uh, integer in here. So anyway, you can see that. Let me just clean that up a little bit. Silly me. And we want score to be integerized. All right. We don't want to see those decimal points. And that's really, really buttery smooth. All right. In the remaining time, let's see if I can just uh, show you how we made this animation look so nice. All right. It's really quite simple. So let's go to my start file. And remember, this was the golden line of code right here. This takes the value of score and tweens it to 10. Remember, it's starting out at zero. So I'm going to cut that out. 
And we're just going to go on down here to where I have my event listener for the click event of the mouse. So whenever the add 10 button is clicked, then we will take score and move it up to 10. Test the movie, and there you go. Counts up to 10. If I click the button again, nothing changes. And the reason for this is because the value of score already is 10, so there's nowhere to tween two. So what we're going to do here is use a second variable called target score. Okay? And that number is going to start at zero as well. And every time we want to increase the score, I'm going to tell target score to add 10 to itself. And then instead of tweening score, well, I'm going to tween score to the new value of target score. And the thing here is that tween max is always changing score. So it needs to set score to a new value. And that new value is going to be target score plus 10. And then now I can press the button repeatedly. We go to 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50. Now that looks cool. And in my other exercise, my other file, I had a pretty cool animation going on. Instead of typing it all out, I want to wrap this up. Let's go to my finished file and I'm just going to grab this guy here. Well, actually, I can just show you it right here. What I'm using while I'm tweening the score, here we're using a tween max from 2, which means that I can set the start values in my tween and also the end values. So let's break this up a little bit. Just want to show you that here we're providing the from 2 method um, two sets, two variable objects, so to speak. Um, we are saying we're starting at an alpha of 0, a scale x of 0, and a scale y of 0. Then we're providing all the values that we're tweening to, an alpha of 1, a scale x of 2.1, and a scale y of 2.1. So let me just grab that. All right, so here's my fun little guy. This goes to 10, 20, to 30. It looks a lot more interesting though if we add a little animation in there. So let's paste. And now we're saying tell the score movie clip over 1.2 seconds that you're going to be changing the alphas, the scale x, and the scale y. And we're using a back ease out. Check it out. All right, you see how adding that motion just, wow, it, it just made it like butter. You're not so much concentrating on what number you're seeing or the number is switching. You just see this beautiful, slidey, smooth, scaly, elegant animation. All right, so there you go. So you can incorporate this technique maybe into your uh, little games that you're building and uh, add a little extra pizzazz. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon. How do I turn this thing off?